Kenosis, a devotional for the seasons of Advent and Christmas, produced by Northside Church. Wednesday, January 3rd, the 10th day of Christmas. Christ, Kenosis embodied, empty obedience. Our scripture passage today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 51 through 52. Then Jesus went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Before we leave Luke and his telling of the Christmas story, let's pause to reflect on these final verses. Coming right after the left behind in Jerusalem scare and finding Jesus in the temple, these two verses cover Jesus' life between the ages of 12 and 30. Most of us find this astonishing, since we experience such a great deal of life change between these years. We have no canonical stories of Jesus as a teenager or as a young man. We don't know anything about how he was educated or how he dealt with being the Son of God while growing up. What we are told is of incredible importance, especially as it relates to God's kenosis and the self-emptying activity in Jesus Christ. After the display of authority and purpose at the temple, Luke tells us that Jesus went home with his parents and was obedient to them. This echoes the words of Paul in Philippians in the Kenosis Hymn. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient. We are quick to think that this line refers to Christ being obedient to God, and surely it does mean that. But when we put it into conversation with Luke, we see that it also means that he became obedient to other human beings, here, namely, his parents. This matches well with what we've seen of Joseph and Mary in this chapter of Luke. They were obedient themselves to the laws and customs of both church and state. Obedience is a key component of kenosis, since as we empty ourselves, we must be careful that we are filled with God and God alone. It is too easy for us to give up ourselves only to take on another master, an idea, a movement, another human being, etc. We are folks in need of discipline in almost every aspect of our human existence, and that discipline comes through obedience. The fact is, we are always obeying something or someone, whether it's God, or the desires of our own broken hearts, or the manipulations of movements and ideas, And that obedience shapes us into who we are. In Jesus Christ, we see the kenosis of God at work in a certain kind of obedience to his parents as they are obedient and ultimately to God. We can assume that through practicing obedience to his parents, Jesus disciplined his body and mind toward obedience to God, an obedience that would eventually require a great deal of discipline indeed. And Luke tells us as much when he says, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and man. This is not just tacked on to the end of the chapter as an afterthought, or as a way of summing up his teenage years. Jesus grew in these ways because he was obedient, disciplined, and directed toward his purpose, revealing the very nature of God as kenosis. We learn a great deal from the boy Jesus here, as we did from the baby in the manger, and as we will from the fully grown man teaching and healing. The key to sustained and character-forming kenosis, self-emptying, is obedience and discipline. If we practice this as individuals and as the church, we too will grow as Christ did, in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and our fellow disciples. We are all practicing to be someone. And those who worship God are practicing to become the people of God. Why is obedience so important to Kenosis? What are you obedient to? What does it mean to grow in wisdom and stature? Let us pray. Now, God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole body, soul, and spirit be found pure and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You who call us are faithful. We know you will do this.